I still remember Kathy Shepard in her role as Helen Keller my senior year. She was a fiend, a spoiled brat, little lonesome demon at the start of the play. Annie Sullivan arrives to serve as tutor. What will you teach her first? Helen's mother asks, says Annie. First, last, and in between, language. Ollie Hubbard directed William Gibson's play. Ollie arrived at Taylor one year before I did. I'm Bryn Marlowe. I showed up in 1977, a highly repressed, closeted even to himself, especially to himself, gay man. Today I am a writer, artist, and clown. But for Ollie Hubbard, I might now be a medical doctor. I arrived at Taylor pre-med, zoology major. Got sidetracked my sophomore year when I took a class in that little communication and theater arts building over on the other side of campus. I loved it. Loved having Ollie as a prof. Rethought my career goals. Changed my majors. Asked Ollie if he'd serve as my academic advisor. During my freshman year, Ollie cast me in his production of Bertrand Brecht's Galileo. Bit part. Got to wear a goatee. Got freaked out when a fellow actor asked for help backstage during a show. Her contact lens had disappeared somewhere up in her eye. Could I help? Have a look? Yow, sister. Don't look to me for anything dealing with the body. It scares me. Anything. A year later, I was cast in Richard Sheridan's School for Scandal as Mr. Snake. I could not play the role to suit director Jessica Russolo. I stink. Loosen up, she said. Think sinuous. Think sinuous. Might as well ask a frozen haddock to bend in the middle. That was still me when I took Ollie's Acting 201 class. He writes in my evaluation, Your major problem is a physical one. You are not physically comfortable on stage. Ding, 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 ding. You project thoughts well on the mental level. There is a problem finding their physical manifestation. Yeah. I spend a lot of time in my head, analyzing, pondering, thinking things through, but comfortable in my body? Not in this lifetime. I wish I could tell you what it was like for me growing up gay, repressed, hating myself, sure my body had doomed me to hell. This body, with desires I had labeled sick and sinful, flawed, abominable. I could get nothing right. Was no good at anything. Until I took Ollie's play directing class my senior year. Directing called upon my analytical skills, reflective thought, sensitivity to subtext, skills I used every day to get by, to pass, to survive. In directing class, all I countered my self-defeating beliefs, convinced me I truly excelled at something. This is one of the best exams you've ever written for me, he wrote on my directing essay test. Thorough, detailed, well-organized. I still have that note. And another one. I am very much impressed with the thoroughness of this prompt book. Your analyses are insightful and detailed. May I make a copy of your book for future reference? I still have that note, too. Ollie's belief in me and encouragement shown as a bright spot in my life and in my career. For several years, I taught clowning as a therapeutic treatment modality to troubled kids. For more years than that, I worked periodically with fourth graders, helping them develop their character, pantomime, and performance skills. I eventually came out to myself and others, married the man of my dreams, a caring, compassionate man, direct, full of loving energy, a hospice chaplain, midwife to the dying. I once asked him, Dave, what do you say to people? I mostly just listen, he said. My job is to show up and to shut up. Dave retired a few years ago after 25 years on the job. He was a member of the hospice team that provided support to Ollie in his final months. As you know, The Miracle Worker was Ollie's final show. The play concludes soon after Helen Keller connects the physical feel of water with the sign Miss Sullivan spells into her hand. A window of understanding opens. Deaf, blind Helen receives the gift of language. It will change her life. She wants to know the name for everything, everyone. She gestures to her tutor. Who are you? Annie takes Helen's hand in hers. Teacher, she spells. Teacher, I can think of no higher accolade.